Hey there, Python trainer Reuven Lerner here, and today we are going to talk about the three uses for splat, otherwise known as the asterisk, in Python programs. And there are three different places we can use them, in function definitions, in calling functions, and in tuple unpacking. So let's take a look at all three of these different possibilities. I'm going to do this, of course, in Jupyter. So in function definitions, is probably the best known use of splat. So I'm going to say here, def my sum numbers. I'm going to say here, total equals zero for one number in numbers. I can say here, total plus equal one number, and then return total. So if I do this, and I now say my sum of, now what is this? Numbers is going to have to be something iterable. It's going to have to be a list or a tuple. It can even, I guess, be like a set or dictionary keys. But it's going to have to be a sequence or an iterable in which we get back numbers, because we're going to be adding them to total. So I'm going to say here my sum of the list, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And sure enough, we get that back. We get 150 back. So far, so good. And there's nothing technically wrong with this. But it sometimes feels a little weird to write a function like this. It feels a little more natural if I could just pass the arguments directly. Wouldn't it be nice if I could say just my sum of 10 through 50? Yeah, that would be great. There's just one problem it won't work. And the reason it won't work is, as Python tells us, my sum takes one positional argument, but we gave five. It's only expecting one positional argument. So we can pass that list or anything else that's iterable that gives us back numbers, but it's only going to be one argument. So how can we change that? How can we say, no, 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 Python. Actually, I want to pass a bunch of positional arguments, but I don't know how many. Well, that's a little tough because Python functions have to know how many we're going to be passing. They can't just take an arbitrary number unless we say splat numbers. We put the asterisk there before numbers. And now numbers is going to be a tuple. By definition, numbers will be a tuple. And its contents will be all the arguments that we passed that no one else wanted, sort of the leftovers, the remainders of the arguments. So I can actually have splat after a bunch of other arguments. That's fine. But it has to be the last one. Well, the last one except for keyword arguments, which we're not talking about today. So if I do this, what happens if I now pass? And I'm going to add a little bit here. I'm going to say here print. I'm going to say here numbers equal. I'm using Python 3.8 so I can do this. And now look what happens. When I say my sum of just like I did before, things go wrong. They go awry. And that's because numbers is a tuple. I told you it was going to be a tuple should have listened. And what are the arguments of that tuple? What are the elements of that tuple? Well, I only passed one thing. So it's going to be a tuple of one element, the list that we passed. That's not any good. This is not how you should do it. So instead, I'm going to take off the square brackets. And now I'm just going to pass five positional arguments. All those positional arguments are going to go into numbers. Why? Because there are no other positional arguments. And thus, numbers will get them all. And sure enough, numbers is then a tuple, a tuple of integers, and we add them all together, and everything is great. So why would I do this? Why would I use splat args? And by the way, it's often known as splat args, splat args, because the name, the sort of traditional name for that parameter is args. As you see here, you don't need to use args. It's traditional. It's nice to do. It's fine, but you don't have to. It's just nice to do. Um, I sort of split my time half and half. Half the time I use args because it's traditional. Half the time I don't use args because I think I've got a better name. Okay, fine. So far, so good. So when would I do this? When would I not do this? Truth be told, I tend to use splat args when I'm going to be passing some unknown number of values. And it feels more natural to talk about it as calling the function which, with a bunch of positional arguments rather than calling the function with a list or a tuple. You can go either way, but you have to sort of make a decision as to which style you want to use. So if I'm running a function that's going to be like this, my sum, yeah, I'm going to use splat args. If I'm saying I want to uh, read from a bunch of different files, right? So we could do something like this. I could say here, you know, def read from file, you know, read files, splat args, and those will all be file names. And then I can say for one file name in args, for one line in open one file name, print, let's say, one line. So say we're going to print all the lines from all the files that we were passed. Could I have written this such that it'll take a list of file names? Yeah, I could have. But again, it feels a little more natural to be able to say, read files, oops, read files, a.txt and b.txt and c.txt and whatever else I'm going to pass along to there. 
right? Just feels a little better than passing a list there. But you'll have to sort of figure out with your gut uh, what feels better, what feels more natural. Okay, that's the first part. That's the first way that we use splat args. And again, this is for positional arguments. It's positional arguments that no one else wanted. Let me just show you just one more thing. If I say here def, let's do foo a and b and splat args. So now I can say print, and we'll do here a equals and b equals and args equals. I love this new feature in 3.8. So now if I say foo of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, look what happens. A is 10, because that's the first argument. B is 20. And args is all the rest. So once again, we see that it picked up the remainders. And we can have as many arguments as we want beforehand, but all the rest are going to be shoved into args. OK, that is how we define functions with splat args. But we can also call functions with splat args. And that's a lot less known. So I'm going to copy my my sum from before. I'm going to pop it in here. So let's say I do this. I now have my sum. It takes, as we've seen, any number of arguments. And if I call my sum of 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, all is good. We get that back. Fantastic. But what if I insist on passing a list? Well, we already saw what's going to happen. This list is one of the arguments. All the arguments are going to be put in a tuple. And we're going to get then a tuple with one element. And that element is our list. Bad news. But what if I have, like, now, if I'm just calling it here directly, who cares? I can take off the square brackets. But what if I have no choice? What if I say here numbers? Well, let's do this. My numbers equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. Now I have a lot less flexibility. My numbers, I'm going to pass them here. I'm going to get the same error. It's not going to work. But now I'm really stuck. Because how am I supposed to take this list? Well, I'm going to, like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. Actually, I do know what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to put a splat before this. And what this means, unroll, I call it unroll or unpack. Let's not call it unpack. Unroll the elements of my numbers as positional arguments. Meaning, Python is effectively going to do a little for loop here. And it's going to take each of the elements from my numbers and stick it into my sum as a regular positional argument. You can think of it as erasing the square brackets. And sure enough, it works just fine. This is not restricted to functions that use splat args. This is for any function whatsoever. If I say here def add of a and b, return a plus b. So if I now say, for example, add of 10 and 3, that works great. What if, though, I say a tuple, t equals 10 and 3, and I say add of t? Once again, not going to work. Why is it not going to work? It's expecting two positional arguments. I only provided one. Bad news. But if I say add splat t, ah, that's a bit totally different thing. Works great. How did that work? Because basically, by unrolling this, it turned it into add 10 and 3. It turned my two element tuple, it got rid of the parentheses, and passed them as two separate arguments. That's pretty snazzy in my book. And I can even go further than that. I can say here, watch this, I can say s equals ab. Actually, let's do, it. Let's do xy. Now I say add of s. That's not going to work because we need two arguments. So what am I going to do instead? I'm going to say here splat s. Splat s, what's that going to do? It's going to unroll the string. It's going to effectively do a for loop on the string. What's that going to do? That's right. It's going to give me my xy back. Huh? How is that possible? Well, this is like saying add of x and y. And you know what that gives me? That's right. It's going to give me then x plus y, which is just xy, what we, got to, what we had to begin with. That's a little less exciting than you might have thought, maybe. So that's a second use for splat, and it can, it's definitely gotten me out of a whole lot of uh, crazy situations where I had a list or a tuple, and I needed to call a function, and there was a mismatch there over whether I had one data structure with a bunch of elements versus uh, splat args or just a bunch of uh, arguments I need to pass. Third, tuple unpacking. You might be familiar with the fact that if I say here, my list equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 30, let's use 10, 20, 30. If I say x equals my list, well, sure enough, x is now referring to 10, 20, 30, the list. That's not a surprise. But what if I say here, x, y, z equals my list? Aha, now x and y and z, each of them has grabbed a different element from the list. This is known as tuple unpacking, even though there's no tuple here, there's a list. Maybe you could call this a tuple of variable names. I guess, I guess. Regardless, you need to have the same number of variables on the left, separated by commas, as you have elements on the right. Because if you don't do that, w, x, y, z equals my list, bad news. Python will say, no, 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 not enough values to unpack. I expected four values, but I only got three values. And by the way, if you only have two equals my list, 
you'll get a similar sort of error. So what if I do this? What if I say here, my list equals 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 70, 80, 90. And I want to say X, Y, and Z equals my list. Well, clearly it's not going to work. Too many values were about. I expected three values. It gave me a ton more. Not going to work. This is where splat comes in. I can say X splat Y and Z and X Y and Z. So now X has the first, Z has the last, and Y is a list with all the elements in the middle. Why a uh, list and not a tuple? I don't know, but that's what we get. Here's the even cooler thing with this. I can say X, Y, and splat Z, and then the list is at the end. Or I can say splat X, Y, and Z, and then X will get all the stuff. So Python's very smart about using this in more than one place. By the way, what if I say splat X, Y, and splat Z? Yeah, it, it, you can't do that. Two start expressions in assignment. That's too many stars for Python. Can't do that. So this really comes in handy, not only if you want to assign from lists, but let's say I have here, um, I'm splitting. So I say words equals, this is a bunch of, you know, bunch of words for my Python demo. Well, let's do this. And I want to say here, first, middle, and last equals words split. So words.split is going to return a list of strings. And now the first word will be in first, the last word will be in last, and middle will be a list with all of the intermediate words. That is pretty great, I think. So those are the three different ways that you can use splat in Python. You can use them in defining functions, you can use them in calling functions, you can use them in tuple unpacking. I find this to be super, super handy, and I hope that you do too. I hope this was useful. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me here on this channel. I'm back all the time with more hints about Python. You should also take a look at my Better Subscribe, Better Developers newsletter, which about uh, 16,000 uh, Python developers from around the world subscribe to. Enjoy. Go to betterdevelopersweekly.com and you too can subscribe. I'll see you very soon.